What's going on folks? Welcome to When I'm 64 Bits. My name's Ben, and this is God Eater 2 Rage Burst. So what is God Eater, you say? Well, it's a Monster Hunter-like game. And what's a Monster Hunter-like game? It's a game where you go and hunt monsters, it's simple. This is a sci-fi themed version released by Bandai Namco Games. It's set in a post-apocalyptic future, where society and the world lays in ruins and humankind has been pushed to the point of extinction. And what's caused this? That would be the Aragami. They are monsters who exist purely to consume. That is all they do. They will eat anything and everything, including their own kind. Uh, and they are, as you can see, quite mean looking customers. The only thing standing in the way of the Aragami are the titular God Eaters themselves. And that's where we come in. So now we're going to start a brand new game and we're going to create our very own God Eater. First thing we have to do, of course, is give our character a name. I'm going to use my standard conventions. Uh, I'm going to be playing with a female character. So we're going to go with Jenny with an I. Don't ask me why, it just happens to be the one I use. If it's a male character, it's always Jeff. Now for a code name, you want something that's going to strike fear into the hearts of your enemies. So you want something like a panther or a dragon. They're probably popular, but me? I'm going to go with Wombat. That's why this series is called Codename Wombat. And so now, let's look at the character creation screens. Now I love a good character creator. Here you can see the basic character standard. But hey, who wants to use the default? Let's see what we can do to spruce this up. We'll start with the hairstyle and as you can see there are lots to go through. Uh, so you can see I've sort of sped through it a little bit just to just to save a bit of time and I think that's the one that I'm going to go for. Now my plan here is to create a character that looks just like the one I had in God Eater Resurrection, which is a remake of the original game. So I'm going with the little butterfly clip on top of the hair. There's lots of other different accessories you can have, such as eye patches, you can have a scar. Uh, and in the flare you can have, I'm going with standard glasses, but you can have sunglasses, you can have all sorts of stuff. Hair colour next, and for some reason I always go for blonde characters. Just, just what I do. You can also change the face, and as you can see there's a variety of different faces that you can go for. I'm going to settle with this one here. Now you can also change the facial expression that they have permanently, so you can have happy, angry, sad, super happy. I'm going to stick with the standard because it's just the better way of doing it. You can also change your eye colour and as you can see there's lots of different eyes to choose from but you can also change the type of the eye, the shape and everything. I'm going with that in green because that's nice. Now I'm glad there's a nice range of skin colours to choose from because it makes it more inclusive so everybody can be represented on screen. You can hear now that you can choose a voice. Now there are a total of 20 to choose from. I'm not going to play all of them because there's a lot. Sorry, I don't see that happening. Must mend this. I've decided to choose this one because when you revive your teammates, you get this. You're taking a nap. That's so cute. Now get the hell up. And I am now satisfied that this looks enough like my character from God Eater Resurrection, so. Let's get started and say this. On with the show. So this is the Fenrir organization. They're the people who run the God Eaters and have developed the technology to fight them. And so what we are going through here is a compatibility test to see if we're good enough to be a God Eater. And how do you defeat them? You use something called a God Ark, which funnily enough is called a Jinki in the Japanese version of the game. Now the God Ark itself is part Aragami because the only way you can defeat them is to consume the core, the, the, like their heart. 
Uh, and in order to do that, the god arc has to be part origami to consume that part. And as you can see, it's quite a painful process to go through. The special thing about the god arc is that it can transform from a melee weapon to a gun to a shield. So you don't have to choose one or the other, it transforms easily between them. Uh, and you can use different melee weapons and guns and shields depending on your playstyle, which we'll look at in a moment. <laughs> they show the same spirit you did after your baptism, Julius. Congratulations! You have risen where others would fall. You have become a God Eater. Soon, the power that sings through your veins will be awakened. You will be welcomed into our elite special forces, the Blood Units. Blood are my chosen soldiers, superior to all other God Eaters. But you don't have to fight alone. You have some AI comrades that you can take with you. And some of them include... You can include Julius, who's officer class, very much officer class. You get the kind of standard scantily clad anime cat girl thing who seems to be obsessed with eating. Comically so. And here's Romeo, look at my anime pants, look at my anime coat. And he kind of sounds like he's a bit of a douche. Which is no surprise when this happens. And the person that did that is Gil. Probably the least convincing Scottish person I've ever seen in a game. Now, I've not got far enough into the game yet, and apparently he might have killed his superior officer in Glasgow. Well, he was out of line. We'll find more later, but on with the mission. So this is the first one that you get to do in the game. Fairly straightforward. So what we're going to do, make sure we're kitted up for it. So we walk up to the terminal and we change our loadout. Now there are different melee weapons. So you have a short blade, you have a long blade, you have a heavy blade, and then you have halberd weapons, which are on sticks, which is a hammer and a spear and a scythe and you can choose the one that suits your playstyle. Now I'm going for the short blade because it's fast attacks and you can stay mobile which is how I like to play. I also choose a gun as well and the choices are between a sniper, an assault rifle, a blast weapon which is kind of like a rocket launcher thing I think and a shotgun but sniper suits me better. And as you can see, in true anime style, it's ridiculously oversized. Now the shield, again, there are different types depending on your playstyle, and there are three to choose from. You have a buckler, which is low defense, but equips really quickly. You have a standard shield, which is a bit more balanced, and then a tower shield, which gives you high defense, but is slow to deploy which means you need to be a bit more careful but uh, I'm going to choose standard shields and let's go into battle now this is an ogre tail which is fairly simple so transform into a gun and we take a couple of pot shots to weaken him down a little bit when we run out of ammo which you can see is the green bar right at the top change to the sword and give him a slice and a slice and oh did you see that that is when you devour. As I said that it's part of origami, so that's what you have to do in order to rip the cause out. So you have a bit of a chomp, and then you stab, stab, stab. Now you'll see when you chomp down on the dead one, on the left hand side it says get. And those are parts that you can use to construct uh, new armour and new weapons. Uh, the, the, the bigger the monster, the more powerful the weapon you create. The more powerful the weapon you create, bigger things you can hunt going forwards. <laughs> Origami has gone silent. Nicely done. Keep up the good work. Chunk down on him. And 
So here we go. Chomp. Dash to the side. Stab, stab, stab. And he's done. And so I'm running up the hill. You can see a sparkly thing just to the right hand side. Now there are, there are things that are lying around and you can pick them up and they also give you things that you can use to make new weapons and costumes and everything like that. Uh, and the other spoils of all you get on the results screen. So you, see you get money and you get more parts that you can use to make more weapons. And it just keeps going in a cycle and you go uh, bigger and bigger and bigger until you get to the end. Now, I'm going to leave you with some footage from God Eater Resurrection. And yes, I am dressed as a giant pink teddy bear. Because why not? It's fun. Although this is the kind of madcap, crazy, fast action stuff that you can look forward to over the coming weeks as I do more of these God Eater videos. Folks, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to hit that like button and subscribe to make sure that you never miss out on an episode. This has been edited using Share Factory on PlayStation 4.